For how you get them off the rabbit. Um, I just take them just like this and if there's any blood, try to rinse it off. I don't wash them with soap or anything. Um, I have frozen some. It's easier just to put them in the liquid right away, otherwise it seems like it never gets done. So fill up your bucket with some water, a gallon or two, depending how many furs you have. Use the same amount of salt as you do allium. Um, if you actually look it up on Amazon, you can get the aluminum sulfate for gardens, which is a lot cheaper than the food grade allium. Uh, the salt, I use pickling salt, so as long as it's even amounts, put it in some water, throw in your furs. doesn't really seem to matter too much what the concentration is. Um, try to mix it up as much as you can before you put the furs in. So you put the furs in, you let it soak two days, um, take them out, and this edge will be coming up, and you can just peel all the um, flesh off. And then you put it back in for another about five days. Um, I've done some as few as four days altogether, um, or as many as ten days. Um, the one we, we'll be working on sat in it a little bit too long, so we got a deer in the middle, and I'll show you what happened with that one. So after it's all done, you wash them off in your bathtub or whatever with soap, shampoo, anything, um, something smelly so that it takes away the rabbit smell. Um, there will be a lot of fur that comes off just from like normal shedding or whatever, so make sure you put something in your drain so it doesn't all go down your drain. Um, so then you let them dry. Uh, they dry over a couple days. I just left mine like this to dry out. Um, you'll be able to see some places where it didn't quite get stretched, where it's real dark right here. If I cared about this part, I would have stretched it out more so it would be more white like the rest of this. Here's another place where you could see these little lines. You can see like this top part was stretched but the bottom wasn't. And again, I'm not going to use this little piece, so for my purposes it didn't really matter. Um, once it's all stretched out and completely dry, if you're leaving it closed, flip it out side the fur outside so that the fur can dry because the fur will still be wet if you leave it in the middle. Um, then you can let that dry for a while that way. This one's still kind of crispy, um, a little bit crunchy. These are real young rabbits. Um, we just had them for meat rabbits and we didn't want to um, get rid of the fur because we were trying to use it as a learning experience for our kids. Um, so you probably have a lot bigger furs and probably a lot thicker furs than what we do. On this side, you can see it was pulled a little bit too much. The flesh was pulled off a little bit too much. You can see like each of the nipple holes on here. So maybe on the belly side, don't pull as much. Um, it's a little bit thinner. It's a lot thinner, actually, than the back piece. But for what I'm doing, I wanted to use it all, so I didn't worry about that too much. Most of these I split down the middle, unless like this one, it had a hole in it, so I could maybe cut it here instead. Uh, but at some point, you're going to take your mink oil and uh, just rub it in here. Get a nice good layer on it, good for your hands, uh, let that sit for a day or whatever. So then you'd open it up, here's where the neck was on this one, here's the armholes. The arms, I cut them pretty close and they almost fill in completely, so you don't have to worry about those, just don't stretch those or they'll stretch right back open. So this is one of the strip blankets. Um, I think I we started at, I cut off the edges, just whatever was crispy or like an odd edge, and then just cut it into a spiral. This middle piece I take off because otherwise this last little piece, it doesn't work well uh, for making the strips. Now I saying we got the deer in the middle of that other one. So right here you can see where the fur slipped. It sat in that solution too long. It's not bad. There's a couple pieces on this rabbit that did that. I'll probably just cut a little bit of that chunk out. But you can hide it in this blanket if you don't get it all. So what they don't tell you <laughs> in the uh, thing I posted, that Mother Earth thing, is about the twisting. So when I first twisted it, I just twisted these all and just didn't worry about it. Well then after I watched some more videos and worked on it myself, what you really want to do is twist it and make sure like all the fur stays on the outside so over here you're gonna pull this off and twist so it's just the, the leather side to the leather side you just gotta make sure you get all that fur out of the way otherwise all your fur is gonna end up on the inside so this is what you'll do you'll twist it like this if you hold it like this right after you twist it it seems like just holding it for that little bit will keep it twisted. Um, they recommend 
putting it on a spool and just having a huge line of these on a spool, but for me, I would not do that again because I ended up seeing that some of my stuff wasn't twisted quite right and I wanted to go back and fix the twisting. Well, in order to do that, you'd have to unspool it all, retwist it all, and trying to twist, you know, whatever I ended up with, 50, 75 feet of fur, it was a huge really explain is how to attach the two pieces together without tying knots. Um, so this piece will be the piece that's attached to the frame. Um, I like to think of it as my old piece and this is my new piece that I'm putting on. So you'll take the old piece and slide it through the slot on the new piece and then you'll take the tail from the new piece and you can slide that one through your old piece. And then what will happen is you have these two pieces and they kind of end up interlocking. I'm not sure if you can really see that, but it's a good, nice, tight hold on it. So if you have any questions on that, just holler. To wrap your furs around the frame, I just tied this first one. Um, I tied it to itself. It's not tied on the frame. And you just kind of go back and forth. Um, just keep going around it. When you get it all wrapped around, and I would do this piece by piece. Um, as you twist it, I would put it around it, like I was saying before, instead of doing one huge long spool at a time. So then you can fix any issues you might have right away. So when you're doing this, um, you want to make sure that this top piece is on the right or left, whichever you do, make sure every piece is like that. So that it's not going like one way and then another way. Now this one's been off of this rack. Um, I just put it back on here to show you guys, so I'm not sure which way it was before. But you can kind of see that you want to keep everything lined up. Now, I was had this standing up, um, the way they show on some of the videos. It didn't work for me because it just kept going, they got switched around and they got twisted around each other and I couldn't tell which one was supposed to be where. So I added this board to it. And this board just kind of holds everything down. It holds it in place. Um, and the other thing I did is I put these little marks on here so that I can make sure that the width is the same all the way throughout this. And then I'll just go down and pull it out again and make sure that, you know, it's all there's not really any gaps. You can move everything around and make sure it's all lined up. They really like to double up on you, so you kind of have to keep an eye on things. I'll show you what they did um, in the video and how I did this. I'm not real impressed, but I'll show you what they did. So you take your end piece, your starting piece, and you start in the middle of your string. And you take it around there and you'll twist it. Take it under your next piece, twist it. So you're just you just keep getting like one twist um, in there. Twist it. So you'll be doing that all the way through, and all you get is like a little X between each one. And that's how I did mine. Um, that's not, I would not recommend it. I'm going to have to redo it. I don't think, it's not what I want, because when you pick this up, I mean, you have a lot of extra space in here. Everything's moving. These pieces are moving up and down and getting stuck with each other. I kept trying to keep these lines straight. Um, so I don't think that that's the best idea. I don't know, maybe if you had some thicker furs, maybe it would work different. Or if you wanted to use even more, like, number-wise furs, and just if you don't mind them all squished together. This one's really lightweight. Um, so I don't know. I don't know how it would work with thicker ones. So I think what I'm going to do is take all these strings off and... I think a better way to keep them in place would just be to 
like go around each one and then go to your next one maybe go around the other way so that's what I'm gonna do with this and I think it'll keep them in place a lot easier or a lot better because there won't be as much wiggle room with them being wrapped all the way around there so anyway once you get that all done you kind of take apart your frame. I'm sure if you had the correct weavers tools or whatever, you could slide it off somehow. And then when you're done, you've got all these weird, these weird ends because these aren't attached to anything, so they're just like hanging there. So I think what I'm going to do is grab another fur and take the fur and tie it up in this corner. This is that one that wasn't twisted yet. But then I would just, you know, weave this in between them just to kind of give it a little bit more structure on the top and bottom because I don't think that'll slide as much um, with that fur in there. So that's it for my blanket. It's lightweight. I don't know, somebody was asking how much it weighed. I had seen somewhere somebody said it was three to four pounds when you do it this way. This one's probably five feet by four feet, something like that, um, if you're wondering about size. I think I used about 50 furs um, originally, and that ended up not even being close to enough, so I think I threw in another 20. But that's, that's about it. I don't know if you guys have any questions, just feel free to holler. Real view of uh, the blanket that I'm working on again. And I just wanted to clarify a few things. It's not a true tan. Um, it's more of a pickling, I believe. About 99% of the tanning that's done is not a true tan. It's a trapper's tan, which is a salt and alum type thing that I talked about. I did try an egg one, and the egg one did not turn out for me. All the hair slipped, so I'm not sure what happened, but egg and brain are ones I probably won't be doing again because it just wasn't worth it for me. Um, another thing is it's closer to 6 foot. Um, by four foot and there's about 25 pieces of fur there so I think that's like 150 feet so if you think about putting that all together in one line having to twist all that yardage um, I, I would just put them on one single piece at a time and just use chip clips or whatever you can to clip it to your frame to keep it from twisting